Hello friends, welcome to the Tech Grants. Today we are going to talk about the low level design of a logging framework similar to log4j. So as part of this video, I am going to code this logging framework and I will guide you on how you can choose a particular design pattern or set of design pattern. For example, in this particular uh, video, we are going to choose multiple design pattern to code logging framework. So I will guide you through like what are the key factor based on which you can choose a particular kind of design pattern for logging framework. So let's look at the requirement first. So the first requirement is that you should be able to log in more than one places. So when you enable your logging, you should be able to show the log on console, write it into a log file, write it into a database, maybe send it over network or send it to a distributed queue. So there should be multiple sync where you can send your log into. Then the second category is or the second requirement is that you should be able to log into multiple categories of message. For example, the general message that you want to print just for uh, your debugging purpose, uh, you can put it into an info message so that you know how your code is flowing. In case you want to debug to a final level, you want to see uh, some logs which are like critical, you don't want to put it into a normal log message because you don't want to burden your system so you can categorize them as a debug logs and finally uh, there can be error log in java you might have seen there are different categories of uh, logging like find finer then info debug error uh, all those categories are there so if you have already used any logging framework like log4j you must be familiar about these two requirement that you should be able to log into multiple categories and you should be able to log into multiple places there can be more than one sync for your log so we'll code for these two category finally the third requirement that we have here is that the category and the place of logging should be configurable so above two point that we have mentioned here this should be configurable it can come from a property file for simplicity the code that i'm going to write here we will hard code it but those hard coding things can be put into a property file for example if you have already worked with log4j you must have seen there is a property file called log4j.properties which will have uh, these things like uh, where do you want to put your log into a configuration for that and uh, what is the category of your uh, logging whether it is info debug or error so thinking these requirement in or keeping these requirement in mind let us look at some of the component which is involved in this particular system so first thing is we will have a logger class and what the logger class will do is it will be exposed to the application. So you will use this class to write your log. That's it. You will have categories. So de de uh, based on your category, you should be either logging or skipping the log for that. Because if your logging category is debug, you don't want to show anything which is above debug. Or if you uh, if you have defined category as info you don't want to show your debug log or the error log you just want to show your info log finally the sync and these things will get clear once we jump into the code uh, finally the sync so there can be multiple sync and all these can be selected based on some parameter or the config file that we provide so at a very high level we see that there is an application and this application will use the logger class to write our logs and finally the logger class will have some feature which will help us into distinguishing different categories so we can have category like info error debug and we can add on to these category we can add some category like fine finer which will give even uh, minute detail of our application logging so these things should not uh, we should code in such a way that these things are independent of each other and if i want to make change into one of these or if i want to onboard a new category it should not disturb the existing ones and uh, same goes for sync so we have multiple sync here anytime we should be able to add a sync or remove a sync from these category so all these things should be configurable and they should be very very loosely coupled with each other okay now when we talk about LLDs, the first thing that you should keep in mind is you should always follow the design principle, the solid principle and you should try to relate your uh, architecture or your requirement to some design pattern. Now, why do you want to relate it to a design pattern? Because design pattern, they have already been time tested and if you use them, then you will avoid the basic errors. So, if you want to 
write your own object oriented code uh, then in that and you're not using any design pattern then it can happen that you may run into some bug which was already faced by someone else and they fixed it by using a particular kind of design pattern so that is why if you the first thing that you should keep in mind is relate the requirement to some design pattern now in this system uh, how do we relate which design pattern uh, this requirements are relating to and how can we choose a particular design pattern for this application so what we'll do is we'll start from creational so we have three categories of design pattern we have creational we have structural and we have behavioral so first we'll start with creational so what all objects that we want to create here we want to create the logger object all these object info error debug maybe we can put them as enum or maybe we can create a simple class for each of them and same goes for sync so we'll have some class for console where we'll have the logic to print it on the console we'll have some logic for file class where we want to have a file output uh, we'll have the code for to write it into a file and finally for database also we'll have a class where we want to write the code to create a database connection and put our log into the database so from creational point of view these seems to be pretty simple these will have one one object created so these will be singleton same goes for logger so logger class we don't want to create multiple instance of logger because if our application is multi-threaded and we want to create multiple instance of logger so what can happen is that you uh, i mean the multi-threaded application should ideally write all the log into a simple single file but if we create multiple instance of the logger then it can happen that we are writing the same log into multiple files or from different threads into multiple files which we don't want it can get even tedious when it when you are dealing with a database so this logger class also will be a singleton class and in this example i will just for the logger class i will write the complete singleton code so that it does not break into when you clone or when you deserialize or serialize and deserialize basically so that is the first design pattern that you are going to use you will have a singleton class for logger these all can be singleton these sync maybe when your application expands you may think about creating these objects on the fly using factory or abstract factory but for now uh, let us create one one object for each of these and yes you can basically use factory and abstract factory for creating the object for the sync next thing is is there any structural pattern which we can use in this application so structure wise if you see there is no uh, basically connection between two systems we, we, it's just a single system which is flowing through from the logger till the sync so there are no two classes like uh, which needs to be coupled with each other or bridged between each other so i don't see any that kind of behavior in this particular application now behavior wise there are two things that are dominating the whole characteristic one is the category and the other one is the sync so we have multiple kind of sync and we have multiple kind of category so first we will look into the category is there any design pattern which can fall into this category so what the requirement says is that we have different kind of category and each are more restrictive than the other so the error category is more restrictive than info so if i have defined my logging level to info i should not show the error log if i have defined it as error then maybe i can show info and error both but if it is error if it is info i should not show the error one same goes for debug if i have defined my level as debug i can show the one which are error and info but i should not show anything which is above debug so suppose if i add another category as fine so i should not show the log which is mentioned as fine into this particular scenario so we see there is a hierarchy in this particular category so this can be related to like a chain of responsibility so if it is related to the first part it will do the job if first part is not able to do the job it will move to the second part the, then to the more restrictive level basically if it is even stricter than this level then i will go to the third level and so on so finally uh, this goes 
into a from less restrictive to more restrictive way and it's it is creating like a chain so we'll use a chain of responsibility principle a chain of responsibility pattern for creating this category and finally for the sync here we see there are multiple categories uh, multiple system where we can sync our log now each are independent of each other but they are dependent on our logging system so if we consider this whole part as our framework so these sync they are dependent on what we are going to log from which category so what we see here is each are dependent on all these are dependent on what we are going to write so these are nothing but you can think of them as an observer so they the changing component is this part where we are getting the log uh, it has become very messy let me erase all so the changing component is this one where application is sending the log and uh, these are being categorized into info error or debug now where do i want to write the log that how we can inform these guys or uh, how we can inform if we have one more sync present so they can be a simple observer and anything that changes here as part of this we can inform or we can notify it to all the observer that is present for this particular subject so you see the relation here the relation here is that all these can be a silent listener they can listen to the change in the log and whatever change happens they can pick it up and basically show it into the console or write it into file or write it into database so here we are going to use the observer pattern so let's start with the coding part like we discussed in our theory section so this logger will be a singleton so what i'm going to do is if you remember or if you have seen my video on the singleton design pattern so i will take that exact same code and i will paste it here and we need to make few adjustment like all these will be logger and for logger objects just say this is also logger okay so once we are done with this change this class is ready we need to implement cloneable and serializable so that we have these two as active so these are overridden next thing is uh, do some work so this work will be the logging work now before making any further change into the logger class let us implement the second thing which was the chain of responsibility design pattern which will be used for uh, the categorization of info debug and error so if you remember the chain of responsibility design pattern so we'll have an abstract class here i will say abstract logger so what this abstract logger will do it will have some level which will tell that uh, what is the level of logging for this so for info say it's one for error it's two for debug it's three which means that when i set the level to three it should print all the logs all info all debug and all errors so that is what it means next thing as part of the abstract logger or when we define the chain of responsibility principle or design pattern is we need to say what will be the next uh, level in the hierarchy so if i delegate this responsibility from level 1 to level 2 what will be level 2 so we have to define that so here we'll say abstract logger which will be next abstract logger or next logging level okay and we'll create a simple setter for next logging level so we have this next thing we'll do is we'll create a, an abstract method here i'll say abstract class and we'll have protected protected abstract void and this will be display so i want to display whatever message we have so this will be the display method next thing is i need to create the logic for delegating the logging to next level so for that we'll say we have void 
mm, what name we can give say log message and it will have int level and string message so here what we can do is we can say that if the level that we have this dot level is less than equal to the level we got then will display the message if this is not the case then we'll go to the next part and we'll see if the next logging level is not equal to null so rather than we logging the message let's delegate it to the next level so we'll say next logging level dot log message and we pass the level and the message so here we have created the chain of responsibility next thing is we need to create the concrete class for displaying this message so first concrete class that will create is say info logger so this will capture all the info so this will extend the abstract class and we need to implement this method we will also create another thing which is a constructor and i will say int level which will define the level for this particular class for the info class so i will say this dot level now this dot level comes from the abstract class logger which is this one so this will be it will be set as whatever level we got here and in display we can simply say info and whatever message we get now similar to this we will create error logger and we'll just copy paste this there the error logger and this can extend abstract logger this will be same as error logger and this will be error and next we'll create another thing which will be for debug logger so this will again extend now before extending let us just copy paste this whole thing this will be debug this will be debug and this extends the abstract logger so we have the three logger ready here and uh, we have implemented the chain of responsibility for info error and debug logger next thing that we have to do is we need when we use this logger class uh, when we get this instance of the logger class that time we have to use the abstract logger to log at various level so for that what we can do is um, we will have the abstract logger here and we will see chain of logger so this chain of logger has to be initialized and this chain of logger we can say build chain of logger now i'm not going to build the chain of logger in the same class because it's not the job of logger class to build the chain so this is the responsibility of another class which i will call log manager so we have a log manager here and this will have the method so this will be protected static method and it will not return anything i don't want anything to be returned from here oh sorry it will return it will return the abstract logger so let us build the chain of responsibility so first was info logger or let's call it abstract logger and this will be info logger and this is equals to new info logger and i will say logging level is 1 so similar to this we will have error logger and i'll have debug logger so error logger value 2 and this is 3 and this will be error logger and this will be debug logger 
now once this is ready uh, what i need to do is i need to build the chain so info logger will delegate its change to or the senior uh, level of info logger is error logger because info logger is level 1 and error logger is level 2 so i will set the next logging level to error logger and for error logger the next level is the debug logger so i will set the next logging level to debug logger and finally we will return the lower most or the lowest most logger so in this case it is info logger so if suppose something is not able to log as part of info it will be delegated to the next level and so on so that is why you return the lowest most info log uh, in lowest most chain uh, the, uh, the concrete class as part of the chain of responsibility or the starting chain of the response chain of this particular logger so here we have the chain let us import the static method so the chain of logger is ready with us what next we need to do is we need to use this to print our message so for that i will create another method i will say this will be create message or i will say create log it will take the level and it will take some message and what it's going to do is it will call the chain of logger to log its message so it will get the level and it will get the message now what i'm going to do is i'll create few more method one will be this i will keep it as private and i'll create some public method so one will be info and this will be string message and this will internally call create message with level as one and whatever is the message that is sent and similar to this <coughs> we will have for error and for debug so for error i will send two and for debug i will send three so this should be same as whatever we have set here okay so till now what i have done is i've created a logger which is nothing but a singleton class i created a chain of logger which will be the chain of responsibility for the logger based on the hierarchy of info error and debug so these two things i built so chain for building the chain of logger i created this abstract uh, i created this log manager where i have the chain of logger here and uh, which is using abstract logger so abstract logger i defined the chain of responsibility and finally i created the concrete class for each of these which is for info logger error logger and debug logger so let's test this now before testing one thing i want to highlight here is that there are few things like this logging level which i have hard coded here ideally this should come from a config file rather than hard coding so let's test this part till now so we have application and in application i'm going to say public static void main and we have logger is equals to logger dot get instance and once we have the instance then say if i want to print info so i will say this is info so let's run this so it is printing from info class because this we have added here okay uh, let's try few more thing and i will see this is error this is error and this is debug this is debug so let's print the error one wow it's printing error and info both why it is printing both because uh, error has higher priority than uh, than info so in our code for the abstract logger we have said that if the level is less than equal to the level that has been passed you display the message 
so since info is less than this it will display similarly if i say let's comment this out and if i want to print debug let's run this and it will print for all three i think there is a spelling mistake here debug okay anyway so the idea here is that it will print for all three now if i want to restrict this uh, what i can do is uh, i can go to the abstract logger and i will say that you print the log only for that particular level so if i do this then if the logger is set as debug then only it will print this so this is all good and fine and here we see that the this is the working component till we have the logger and we have the categories now next part in this particular video will be to uh, see the uh, implementation of sync so for the sync we said that we'll use observer design pattern so observer design pattern it consists of two key component one is the subject which is the changing part and second is the observer which is the constant part so observer will, will be listening to the changing part and making the change as per the subject so so for that let us create two classes first first will be we'll say log subject and i'll create one more class which will be log observer so we have the observer class and the subject class so for observer for the subject class what subject class contains it contains a list of log observer so we'll say log observers and this will be new array list so sub in subject uh, we have we basically define the list of observer and we define couple of methods so one method will be for adding a new observer second method will be for removing the observer and third method will be to notify to all the observer so let in this particular scenario the remove part is not so much relevant because uh, everything will be config driven so if you want to restart the job we can simply load from the config file and create the observers again so i will just implement the create add observer method and the notify one so here we'll say we have void add observer so where do we want to add the observer so for that we'll create a map and this map will be list of integer why integer because this will define the level for which we want to do the logging and for each level we can have a list of observers so we can have list of log observer this will be log observer. so basically this is not required for now we'll say log observers is equals to new hash map so when we add the observer that time uh, we need to get two input one is for which uh, level do i want to add this observer to and uh, basically the observer the actual observer so this will have int level and uh, then the log observer which is log observer so if we have the level we have the observer so what we'll do is we'll say log observer or the list of log observer this is equals to the log observer map we have we get or default so what do we get we get the value for this level and if we have not al already added anything for this particular level so we'll say new array list so you add a new list there so once we have this then we can say in our log observer i can put level and i can put this log observer list 
now before that in my log observer list i need to add this new observer so i will say you add this new observer so this is all about the add observer method next thing is i need to notify all observer so once we have the list of observer i want to notify any change that has happened to all the observer so for notifying all the observer what i need to do is i need to get the all the observer list and uh, for that we can say for map dot entry and i have integer here i have list of log observer here and this i can say let's say entry and this will be log observer dot entry set so i will go through each of the observer and uh, i will check whether i need to notify it to this observer or not so the entry dot get value so this will give me the list of observer which has subscribed for this log level and for each observer observer that i get i will explain this code once more once it is complete so just bear with me and here i will say that for each observer i need to log the message so i'll get the message here also okay so for each observer i need to do a log so i need to create this log method so i created this uh, log observer so i don't want it as a class i will make it an interface i'll make it as an interface and i will say void log and this will get string message okay so i think now this will be fine so this this is fine we have the notify observer we have the add observer now we need to create since we have to log so i need to create some concrete logger so for example we will create couple of classes one will be console logger and i will create one more class which will be file logger so i have the console logger and file logger so this will implement uh, the interface that we created which is for log observer and i need to create this message here so i will say out this is coming from console and whatever message that you have you print it similar to this for file logger also i will implement log observer i need to implement this method and i will say out write to file and write whatever message is there okay so these two things are ready for me so this file logger is the observer the console logger is also the observer subject i have these things i have add observer and notify observer so next what i need to do is i need to add these observer and also i need a place from where i can notify to these observer so we'll go back to our logger class so in our logger class i have the chain of logger so similar to that i will create one more and this will be the log subject and i will say log subject okay and what i need to do is i need to get the subject first because based on the subject i will have the observers so here in my log subject i will say build subject and this build subject method i will again put it in the same log manager class because it seems like the responsibility of log manager class to do all these things so we have static and this will not return anything will it it will return me the log subject
I want it as part of the log subject. So, oops. I need to import this static method. So, I need to go to my log manager and I need to implement the log subject. So, I'll create a new subject. I will have the log subject here. So, in log subject, I need to add few observer. So, my first one is the console logger. So, I will have console logger is equals to new console logger. And the other one that I had was file logger. So, our file logger is new file logger. Okay, once I have these two, I need to return the log subject that I have built here. Now, I need to uh, add the observer here. So, in my log subject, I need to add observer. So, suppose for all the info levels, I just need to put it in the console logger. So, what I will say that all the level 1 messages which are related to info, I just want it in the console. If something is of level 2, I want it in the uh, I want it in the file. But when I'm writing it in the file, I want them to be level 1 also. So in observer, I will say that okay. When you are logging it in file, you so or let's keep it the other way around. When you are showing it on console, you show me just for demo purpose, you show me both level 1 and level 2 and uh, when you are putting it in file so that time you just put level 1 message okay so file logger is observer of level 1 message console logger is observer of both level 1 and level 2 message so we have built our log subject here let's go back to the logger so we have the log subject ready with us so next time what we need to do is whenever we create the message so that time we need to send this information as well so i need to send the log subject as well for printing of this particular message so here what i need is i need a log subject which will be this so when i display the message i want to display play rather than printing now i want to show it on console or write it into file so i need to refactor these and in display what i need to do is i need this log subject which will be log subject now wherever i have imported or used abstract logger which will be in info logger and uh, in the other places which will be in error logger and debug logger as well let's start with the info logger so here also i need to add log subject which will be log subject and now rather than printing this message what i am going to do here is i will simply create a string here which is equals to this and in my log subject dot notify so i want this is an info so this is level one and whatever is the message so i want to notify all my level one observer that there is a message something like this okay similar to this i need to edit my error log so here also now i will have a log subject which will be log subject and uh, again i'll just copy it from info so this is error and now this is level 2 message so i will notify all the level 2 observer that there is a message here and similar to this we'll have for the level 3 as well I have log subject which is log subject here and this is debug this will be for level 3 okay so what we have done let's recap once more so what we have done here is that the logger was uh, 
a simple singleton so in logger we added the new logger then we added the chain of responsibility so this chain of logger was for uh, getting the info error and debug in correct order and finally we added a log subject so this log subject was nothing basically we can refactor this to name it as log sync I just added it subject so that those who don't have the prior knowledge of observer pattern they will be able to understand so in observer pattern you have a subject and you have list of observer which will be listening to the subject or subscribing to the subject so here I have uh, when, I, when we created the singleton for logger we created the log subject as well and when we build the subject so that time we created uh, these are these all will be singleton because that uh, this method this method will be called only once from the uh, process so these all will again be in turn singleton it will it will not get created from anywhere else and I made it as protected so that's fine so here we have added the observer and we said that okay for level 1 it will only be in console for level 2 it will only be in console and uh, the second observer was for file logger so file logger will only log level 1 messages that's it so what we need to do here we will just run the application and see what happens we will use the same example so we have logger info so when we run logger info and we say this is info ok so it says that in console it is printing this is info and this is also writing it into the file so it is doing the two job why it is doing the two job is because in log manager we said that for console logger we will be logging both level 1 and level 2 uh, sorry uh, for con for level 1 we will have the console logger and we will also have the file logger so that is why when it ran so it printed into the file also and it basically displayed on the console also so if we go to the application and I comment this part out and I say for error for error remember we just have one subscriber which is the console so error it is only coming on console for let's see for debug what happens for debug we have not added anything we have not added any observer for debug so it has not printed anything because if you see here in the log manager we don't have anything for the level 3 so let's add something for level 3 here so if it is level 3 which is debug I want it in a file and I also want it in my console logger so now let's run for debug which is the same scenario this scenario so now the debug this is debug it is writing in console and it is also writing into the file so this is how we have implemented our logger framework we used three very important design pattern to come up with this system and uh, in the 40 minutes round of the interview maybe we will not be able to code complete thing but at least we can what we can do is we can show them that uh, yes we will have these three decoupled component and these are the design pattern we are going to use now interviewer will ask you to implement maybe the couple of things or maybe only one design pattern or only one component for this logging so uh, in most cases it the interview ends in the first part where we have the logger which is singleton and then we implement the categories so if it comes to the second part where we have to implement the uh, the sync as well so you can basically create the class and you can explain the high level functionality of observer design pattern so that should be good enough but if you have time, if you have one hour or more than one hour, then you should be able to come up with this whole code. I hope it was informative. So that is it for this particular video. Do let me know in the comment section how it was. Do like this video. A lot of effort was put for this. So thank you for watching TechGrant. See you in the next video.